PBBM, pinaghahanda na ang mga general, mga ahochero, mga nga, there is something up in the airs. <laughs> May something-something na ganap. Pinaghahanda na ang mga general. Uh, nangyari ang kanina nung uh, nagkaroon ng uh, promotion sa sa mga general na ito nung sa kanina sa Malacanang. Uh, basahin natin yung balita tungkol diyan. Ito yung nangyari. Okay, ano ito po sinabi ng PBBM no? or ito yung balita rather about it. PBBM sa AFP officials maging handa sa pagdepensa ng bansa. Handa raw ang pagdepensa ng ating uh, bansa mga kojero mo ang uh, may mga something something na diyan. Oo, kapag uh, if you're reading between the lines, eh mukhang uh, mayroong something-something na dyan. Ang sabi po ng ating Pangulo, bilang leader, hindi dapat umasa lamang ang mga opisyal ng Armed Forces of the Philippines, kundi dapat na maging handa at kagyat na tumugon sa umuusbong na, na, na national security at defense realities sa bansa at sa loob ng rehiyon Yan ang sinabi ni Pangulo kanina. Sa mga newly promoted generals at mga flag officers, Uh, araw ng biyernes, isinagawa ang uh, oath-taking ng mga newly promoted generals at flag officers ng AFP na idinao sa Camp Aguinaldo sa Quezon City. Yun, mga kutsero. Pahinga natin yung speech ni Presidente para naiintindihan natin kung ano ba yung uh, pinanggagalingan ng balita na to. Ito yung kanyang, uh, ito yung kanyang speech, mga kutsero. Bark on this new chapter in your respective careers. As you now prepare yourselves for the myriad challenges that lie ahead, let us all take pause and be reminded that coupled with these promotions are greater responsibilities and duties. True. These will strain and test the mettle of your character, integrity, loyalty, and professionalism in the fulfillment of your sacred duty of protecting and defending our people and our nation. I, along with the nation, expect all of you to perform your duty with strength of character and utmost integrity, loyalty, and professionalism, qualities fundamental and core to the service as officers in our nation's arms. I place emphasis on this at the outset. In light of the continuing changes and emerging developments in our nation's evolving security landscape, your new positions and ranks shall place you at the forefront, both familiar and new and novel defense and security challenges that we now face. Right. You must not only anticipate, but you must also be ready to adapt yeah, nah. and respond to emerging national security and defense realities Ayun. that exist in our country and in our region. While it is noteworthy that we see positive and encouraging developments in terms of our internal security situation, there remains much to be done. We must maintain our vigilance and guard against those actors, whatever nature or form they may take, who would threaten and jeopardize the peace we have striven and fought for all these many years. So I enjoin you to help ensure that the communities once beset by conflict are benefiting and continue to benefit from the gains of peace and our numerous development interventions. For the progress of our nation and the welfare of our people are underpinned by the peace and the stability, the security of our communities. As the new leaders of our AFP, you are expected to help ensure that the armed forces will be more agile flexible and responsive to better address emerging issues confronting our nation. We must be ready. Our armed, for our armed forces must be capable of securing and defending the archipelago from emerging threats. Oy. I urge you to further enhance joint planning and operations to ensure interoperability across all AFP units and platforms, sustain and foster greater collaboration with other government agencies and civil society groups, harnessing their respective knowledge, specializations, and technical expertise in mm -hmm. coming up with innovative, effective, efficient solutions to the challenges that stand in the way of achieving peace and unity. Right. As I acknowledge your well-deserved promotions and patriotic service, I also express my gratitude on behalf of our people and the nation to your families and loved ones who have shared the burden of your service. 
I am grateful for their selflessness and sacrifice to support you in your career and the performance of your duty for the Philippines. Be assured of this administration's unshakable commitment to their protection and their welfare, just as we in turn commit to ensure that all of you are provided with the necessary tools to perform your tasks and duties in the fulfillment of your service to our nation and our people. Mm -hmm. Join me now and our nation as we together march forward in unison towards that future that is filled with hope and pride and unbound opportunities for all Filipinos. Once again, congratulations to the newly promoted generals and flag officers of our armed forces. Mabuhay ang sandatahang lakas ng Pilipinas. Mabuhay ang bagong Pilipinas. Pero bago natin ipagpatuloy ang ating kwentuhan dito sa topic na ito, huwag niyo po kakalimutan na suporta ng mga kaibigan natin sa Sendwave. Ayan, kung kayo po ay nasa US, UK, Canada, Italy, France, Spain, Ireland, and Belgium, ay pwede pwede na po ay magpadala na inyong mga remittance sa pamamagitan po ni Sendwave. Wala pong remittance fees yan, mga kutsero. Ang gagawin nyo lang ay i-download ang Sendwave app, kuha kayo ng account, ilagay nyo inyong bank account details dyan, at pwede pwede na ay magpadala sa Gcash, sa mga banko, at iba't ibang mga pawn shops din dito sa bansa. At kapag ginamit nyo pa rin po ang ayong promo code na Coach Jarrett ay makakuha kayo ng karagdagang $20 free credit. Kaya ganito na po si Sendway for all of your remittance needs. Maraming salamat. Woo! Mabuhay po kayo, mga bagong promote na general dito sa ating bansa. And um, I guess on behalf of all peace-loving Filipinos, maraming maraming pong salamat sa inyong serbisyo. Maraming maraming pong salamat sa inyong sakripisyo at maraming maraming pong salamat sa uh, pagtugon ng, uh, sa tawag ng ating inang bayan. Yeah. Deserve nila yan, mga Ojero. Palakpakan natin sila. Deserve ng uh, ating uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines ang gantong klaseng parangal, mga Ojero. At sana, no, sana palagi tayong ganun. Sana pag uh, may nakita tayong mga sundalo, eh, Pagbas kayo mga veterano, mga kutsero, eh lagi nating tatandaan na ang ating uh, kalayaan ay uh, dahil sa sakripisyo na ibinigay ng ating uh, kasundaluhan. Palakpakan ulit, mga kutsero, para sa ating mga sundalo. Okay? But mga kutsero, no? uh, dito po sa nangyari na ito, sa, sa speech po ni Pangulo, eh makakakuha po tayo ng konting ideya sa kung ano yung uh, pinaghahandaan ng ating administrasyon. Uh, binanggit naman kanina, uh, national security, we must uh, maintain our vigilance and guard against those actors, whatever nature or form they may take, who would threaten and jeopardize the peace we have striven and fought for all these all these many years. So, very, very uh, uh, top of mind ngayong panahon na to ang uh, usapin ng national security. Hindi lamang ho uh, sa labanan sa, yung labanan ng militar sa militar, no? hindi lang ho dyan. Pati ho sa labanan ng impormasyon. Lalo na, nung naglabas ng uh, balita nitong nakaraan na meron nga, ano, merong mga certain na uh, China sponsored groups na gustong pag uh, paghiwa-hiwalayin o gustong paghati-hatiin ang opinion nating mga Pilipino ukol sa West Philippine Sea. Pero anyway, mga kutsero no, um ito po, ito nangyaring uh, sinabi ni Pangulo na maghanda na. Maghanda na raw ang ating militar. Ito po ay uh, after Matapos ng uh, maglabas ng statement ng Amerika, ng US of A's, na any attack on Filipino vessels, aircraft, armed forces will invoke our mutual defense treaty. Yan, ito na nga yung medyo ano, nakakatakot mga kutsero eh. Medyo nakakatakot itong ganito. Sinabi niya, just this past week, the PRC vessels acted dangerously and unlawfully as our Philippine friends conducted a routine resupply mission within their own their own exclusive economic zone in the South China Sea 
Sabi niya, I want to be clear. I want to be very clear. The United States defense commitment to the Philippines is ironclad. Yun. Matibay na matibay daw yan. Parang bakal. Kasing tibay daw ng bakal. Alam nyo, mga, alam nyo po mga kutsero, ito lang po ang akin dyan. Very, very simple. Nagkaroon na po ng ganitong sitwasyon nung nakaraan. At hindi humaganda ang experience natin sa mga kano. Hindi humaganda ang experience natin sa mga kano. But between the Chinese, between China and the US, I would rather side with the lesser evil. <laughs> That is the US. I would rather side with the lesser evil. Ngayon, mga kutsero. Pointing that out, I would like to say this as well. Na sana, hindi lang to lip service. Hindi lang ito uh, bola. Hindi lamang ito isang pamamaraan para mauto ang mga Pilipino. And I'm hoping against hope no, na the Americans and our allies, not just the Americans, pero yung mga kaalyado talaga natin, will be there when push comes to shove. Marami na akong nagsabi, di ba? Marami na nagsabi na, ano eh, na susuportahan nila tayo, etc., etc. But I think actions will speak louder than words. Although hindi po natin sinasabi no, na dapat eh, sana nga, hindi nga mangyari yung kinakatakutan natin. But, when push comes to shove, let us hope na this will, uh, they, they will follow through, na ipagpapatuloy nila o itutuloy nila yung kanilang uh, aakto sila sa kanilang pangako. Pero sinabi din ng Pangulo kanina, huwag tayong masyadong umasa. Ayan, no? Huwag tayong masyadong umasa. Dapat tayo ay maging handa na kaya nating ipaglaban kung ano yung ating uh, kung ano yung para sa atin lalong-lalo na sa usapin ng national security at defense. So at least mga kutsero no kahit may mga ganyang sinasabi ang Amerika, may ganyang sinasabi ang ibang mga bansa. Ang pangulo natin ng atin pong uh, administrasyon ay very very conscious na sa utak po ng ating administrasyon na yung kanilang pangako ay pwedeng hindi matuloy. Yung kanilang pangako ay pwedeng pwede rin mapako. Kaya maganda na rin na tayo ay maghanda ng ating sariling kapasidad. Pero mga kutsero, nagkomento si uh, China dito sa sinabi ng uh, US. no, Siyempre, as usual, hindi pwedeng tatahimik lang ang China. <laughs> Kailangan may comment din sila. So ano ang comment nila? Ito. China, US backing of Philippines acts in Philippines acts in uh, West Philippine Sea doomed to fail walang kwenta yan walang kwenta yan ng ano yung ganyong pinagdadadrama nyo dyan no, parang yun ang sinasabi ng China sabi ng China uh, the US Embassy in the Philippines in disregard of facts made baseless attacks against China's legitimate and lawful law enforcement activities to safeguard our rights at the West Philippine Sea. Sabi pa, it is a sinister attempt to endorse the Philippines' acts of infringement and provocation. We deplore and reject it. Sabi ng China. Oh. Ginagamit nyo lang ang Pilipinas. Ayun na sinasabi Ginagamit nyo lang ang Pilipinas. Sabi pa ng China. The US is not party to the South China Sea issue. It has no right to get involved in a problem between China and the Philippines. Ay, wala raw, ano, huwag ka raw umiksena, US. Wala ka, hindi ka kasama sa problema namin dito. Problema namin to. Ay, mamaya mag-comment ako dyan. <laughs> Antay lang kayo, wait lang. Uh, the U.S. promise of defending the Philippines must not hurt China's sovereignty and maritime interests in the South China Sea and it also must not enable and encourage the illegal claims of the Philippines. Uy, tayo pa raw yung may ginagawang illegal. 
Pilipinas pa raw ang may ginagawang illegal. Hmm. Alam niyo mga kutsero, yung mga ganitong salitaan, yung ganito, yung nagsasabi, huwag kang makailam dito, problema namin to. Alam niyo yan yung mga napapanood sa pelikula, di ba? May, may mga mapang-abusong ama or mapag-abusong asawa tapos sinasampal-sampal yung asawa niya in public tapos napasok na yun yung bida. Sabi, itigil niya yan! Huwag mong bugbugin yung uh, asawa mo, yung anak mo, tigilan mo yan! Tapos sasabihin ng kontrabidang tatay or kontrabidang asawa, huwag kang makailam dito, problema namin to! Yon, ganun yung ganun si China. <laughs> Na-imagine niyo na ba? Ganun siya ngayon. Huwag <laughs> kayong makailam dito. Amin to. Problema namin to, mga kasawa. Problema namin to, mag-jowa. Anak ko to. Ganun. ganun. Ganun ngayon si China. Problema namin to ng Pilipinas. Huwag kayong makailam dito. <laughs> Yan. Ganun, ganun ngayon si China. Alam niya kasi, mga kodjero, na hindi kaya ng Pilipinas mag-isa. Diba? Hindi kaya ng Pilipinas mag-isa. Alam niyo yun. Alam niyo yun. Kaya mga kutsero, dahil hindi kaya ng uh, Pilipinas mag-isa, lahat ng tutulong sa Pilipinas, ah, kailangan i-box ano, i- out. Wala. Walang makakalapit sa Pilipinas. Amin lang to. Kasi kaya namin pag si Pilipinas lang. Pero pag sumama na si Australia, medyo mahirap. Pag sumama na si Japan, medyo mas magiging mahirap. Pag sumama si South Korea, medyo mas magiging mahirap pa. Pag sumama si... Uh, Uh, US mas madadagdaga ng paghihirap. Pag sumama ang uh, ang uh, Germany, mas lalong hihirap. Pag sumama ang Canada, etc. etc. The Allies of the Philippines ay mawawala ng ano ng uh, silbi ang pangbubuli ng China. Hindi lamang sa Pilipinas pero sa lahat ng nandoon na nag na nag-occupy at nagma-maximize at gumagamit ng West Philippine Sea. Pero siyempre, ang, ang uh, ano, ang sasabihin ng China, eh sige, pag napaalis nyo kami dito, may papalit lang na iba na mas malakas. Kaya nga bumubuo na, kaya nga ano to eh, dapat magkaroon ng ano eh, ng uh, code of conduct sa ASEAN. Sino lang ba hindi nagpapausad ng code of conduct? China. China lang naman eh. Ang pabebe dyan sa code of conduct na yan. Ayaw niya mag-participate. Kasabi nila, oh, yeah, yeah, gusto namin yung code of conduct na yan. We want that. Oo, oh, oh. sige, umpisahan na natin yan. Oh, panahon pa ni Digong, pinag-uusapan na yung code of conduct na yan. Oh, awa ng Diyos, wala pa rin. Yan. So dahil dito, mga kutsero, may bagong development. Kanina, nag-usap ang Amerika at US, uh, Amerika at Pilipinas through Secretary Gibo Chodoro, ang ating Defense Secretary, at ang Lloyd Austin, ang Secretary of Defense naman ng Amerika. Anong sinabi ng dalawang ano to, ng dalawang pinag-usapan nila sa kanilang uh, phone call? The secretaries discussed the incident on October 22, particularly the PRC's dangerous and unlawful maneuvers that caused collisions with Philippine resupply and coast guard ships putting the safety of Philippine vessels and crew At risk. Napaka-delikado daw. The secretaries have reaffirmed that the MDT extends to both countries, public vessels, aircraft, and armed forces to include the Coast Guard. Tama, Coast Guard. Anywhere in the Pacific to include the South China Sea. Secretary Austin reiterated his commitment to the Philippines and the Indo-Pacific is ironclad. statement no puro ironclad. Alam niyo kayo diyan sa state sana ano no, sana wag wag kayong wag kayong mga ako ng bagay ninyo ayang gawin. Sana. Umaasa kami na gagawin niyo pero sana. 'Di ba? Sana lang. Buti na lang hindi lang US ang kaalyado natin. Buti marami tayong kaalyado. <laughs> anyway, at uh, in interview din kanina sa The Source si Secretary Gibo. So, panorin natin yung ano. Masyado mahaba to This is around 30 minutes. So, kinompress ko na lang to around 13 minutes. Yung uh, importante yung mga bagay lamang ang uh, kinuha natin dito sa interview nato So, panorin natin, panorin natin ito, mga kutsero. 
U.S. President Joe Biden reaffirmed what he called his country's ironclad commitment to uphold the mutual defense treaty in case of an armed attack against the Philippines. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning told the United Boo! interfering in the issue between Beijing and Manila since it is not a party. Real dispute. <laughs> Let's go straight to the source of the story. We have Defense Secretary Gibo Tudoro. Secretary, welcome to the source, sir. Good to see you again. Thank you for your time. Good morning, Vicky. It's nice to see you again, and uh, good morning to all the televiewers. Secretary, let's start with what I just found out, that you actually had or conversed with uh, Secretary Austin this morning. Please tell us more about that conversation. Well, uh, I requested and uh, we had a phone call with Secretary Austin this morning. We released a joint statement simultaneously. In this call, he reiterated President Biden's statement of the ironclad guarantees uh, of uh, the United States to the Philippines uh, based on our mutual defense treaty. Sana po, matuloy na. Uh, the ironclad support. Actually, uh, the term he used was laser focus on oh, laser the focus. Uh, alliance between the Philippines and the United States. He once again reaffirmed uh, that uh, the, joint, the purpose of our joint operations really is for the upholding of a rules-based international order and international law. Um, we agreed to let our staffs talk, respective staffs talk, on uh, increased bilateral uh, interactions and activities and Wait. bilateral actions and activities. Uh, finally, uh, we talked on other matters of mutual cooperation. Uh, and uh, concern. Uh, we agreed to open the lines once again for further exchanges and we will see each other once again in Jakarta in the mm -hmm. sidelines of the ASEAN Defense Minister meeting. Right. When meeting, is that, uh, plus Secretary? Plus. When is that? This uh, is this month, uh, next month, in November uh, 16, 17, I believe. All right. Um, in that press release, it said that both secretaries committed to redouble efforts to strengthen bilateral coordination, interoperability, and support for the modernization of the armed forces of the Philippines. In um, maybe if there could be any specific actions that are that could happen in the short term, sir, is there anything that you can tell us right now? Look. Uh, is the, the frequency and uh, we will uh, make more diverse the uh, our, our interoperability exercises and they will in, uh, and uh, in support of our sovereignty operations over the West Philippine Sea and in other areas and interoperability um, there was one generic is a taken sir um, somewhere near Palawan but uh, the question now is really uh, is it possible to have joint patrols or um, joint sail? Uh, I don't know, sir. Sometimes they, uh, there, there is a time that it's called a sail, a joint sail, and then there are times it's called a joint patrol. Can you please tell us what the difference is? Well, really a joint, uh, I, I really, uh, that probably the terms are interchangeable. Okay. But uh, a joint sail me really means joint uh, uh, you know, when they pass by, our vessels join up and link up with them until they leave the territorial sea. A joint patrol is actually a uh, focused exercise on a particular area within our territorial uh, rights, uh, sovereign rights or territorial jurisdiction. So a joint sail merely is a uh, passing exercise, while a joint patrol is a more focused uh, exercise. Okay. Is a joint sail or a joint patrol during a resupply mission something that should be done? Oh, good the question. The United States. Uh, all these options are being calibrated by our respective staffs, and they will come up with uh, uh, recommendations uh, accordingly to, to us. But all options are open, uh, just as long as these are within uh, the bounds of international law and they support Philippine interests. Right. Um, I, I know that there are some strategies that cannot be publicized, sir, but hypothetically, I hope you don't mind, um, if there was a joint patrol or a joint sale, for example, 
on um, between the United States and the Philippines for the resupply mission in Ayungin Shoal. That is within um, the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, uh, 200 nautical miles. Ayungin Shoal is about 110 nautical miles, if I'm not mistaken. Would there be yes. any? Uh, would that still be in the legal bounds of the law in the event that happens, sir? Uh, part of it, uh, joint patrol within these areas. Yes, with the U.S. Um, on a resupply oh, mission, yeah. for a resupply mission in a union show, would that still be within the perfectly bounds of the, international that law? That is within the Philippine uh, Exclusive Economic Zone. So right. it's perfectly legal under international Tamayon. law. Okay. Uh, Tamayon. In, in the view of a majority of uh, nations, it is just China's uh, uh, incredulous and illegal claim to the most of the China, South China Sea, which... Uh, goes against the grain of mm -hmm. uh, the rights of uh, the Philippines over these areas. Right. Conduct activities within this area. Need to ask you, sir, we're live now. Regarding the uh, Mutual Defense Treaty, is it clear to you that the recent collision between Philippine and Chinese vessels um, will not trigger the uh, Mutual Defense Treaty? No, it won't. You know that statement. There's always those two words, eh, armed attacks. The end, the end attack. Eh. Yes, uh, it will not uh, trigger the mutual defense treaty depending on the gravity of uh, on, on this scale. And we are also very careful not to trigger an event uh, which will uh, not to cause an event rather that will trigger uh, Article 4 of mm -hmm. the mutual defense treaty. We are, we, we are not at war with China. Uh, we don't want a war with China, but we are resolute in defending our territory, and they should respect that. And if they are responsible at all, they should not provoke incidents which will cause us to have further escalations. They are a big and powerful country. We're a small country, an archipelagic one at that. If they had any truth behind their statements that they want peace and development, they would leave us alone. <laughs> Gusto ko yun, ah. In a different way. Gusto ko yun, ah. Secretary. Gusto ko yun sinabi ni Zeki Muna yun, ah. Sabi niya, if there's any truth to their claim na they want peace, eh, leave us alone. Yun. Tama kasi yun, mga kutsero. Yung ginagawa po natin is a legal exercise of our sovereign rights sa ating exclusive economic zone. Tama po yun. Kung meron pong nagsasabi sa inyo na mali yun, i-refer nyo po sila, sabihin nyo sa kanila, nabasa nyo na po ba yung own clause, pakibasa na lang. Kasi nakasulat naman yun doon. <laughs> natin. That seems to be the issue here. While um, you, you utter those words, China is saying the exact opposite, that we are the ones harassing, we are the ones provoking, we are the ones doing dangerous maneuvers in uh, the West Philippine Sea. So my question, sir, is how could this possibly be resolved? Number one, is that line of communication with China still open? And could there be... Uh, bilateral talks, new upcoming bilateral talks between the Philippines and China? Uh, uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs is always ready uh, to talk to China. But uh, on my own personal opinion, the talks really should be furthered on certain principles. Number one, it should be on the basis of UNCLOS and Yun, tama. UNCLOS. Number two, uh, it should show uh, good faith. Yun, importante rin yan. Good faith. Number China. three, they should be open, transparent, and public. Tama. Uh, so that there can be no uh, misinterpretations. Intended or uh, implied or, or so-called whispered uh, narratives that can be spun out of these talks. Uh, naturally, there should be talks, but they should be based on grounded, fully grounded, well-grounded, and fundamental principles that will be institutionalized and will stand the test of time and not be subject to the whims and fancy of any administration, particularly <laughs> China. <laughs> Tama.
<laughs> ah, medyo ano. Tama yung sinabi doon, si Kibo, mga kutsero, di ba tinanong siya, paano, ma- paano ba mariresolve ba to? Sabi. Oo. Sabi kung pwede bang mag-usap. Pwede naman daw, walang problema doon. Kaso, eh may history si China na pagsisinungaling eh. Mahilig siya magsinungaling. <laughs> Obvious ba? So, dapat daw, number one, uh, well, sinabi niya, public number one. Ano eh, pangatlo na pala yun. Number one, dapat ang basis ng usapan ay unclos. Kasi yung unclos na, yung prevailing law sa gitna ng lahat ng signatories nun. So wala na ibang usapan. Kalimutan na yung history. Eh tayo, may claim tayo nga dyan eh. 1950 something pa, 1958 pa yung claim natin dyan eh. Meron pa as early as 1800s, meron na tayong claim dyan. O si China may ganun din, si Vietnam may ganun din. O, maraming may ganun. Pero ang pag-usapan na lang natin, yung... 200 nautical miles ng unclos. Kasi yun ang equalizer natin lahat. So, dapat ang basihan natin unclos. Pangalawa, dapat may good faith. Ano po yung good faith? Ito yung ano, uh, may intensyon na gumawa ng tama. Eh, si China, walang ganun eh. <laughs> hindi siya ganun, guys. Hindi siya sanay sa good faith. <laughs> yung uh, Chinese Communist Party, walang good faith sa katawan yun. <laughs> Wala siya lang intensyon na gumawa ng tama. <laughs> so, yan. Pangalawa. Pangatlo, ito yung pinaka-favorite sa lahat. Kailangan public. Kailangan public. Naririnig ng lahat ng uh, citizens ng mga bansa na yon China, Pilipinas, Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Taiwan, kung sasama si Taiwan, etc. etc. Bakit? Para walang room for misinterpretation. Kasi si China, sinungaling nga, mahilig magpaikot ng kwento. So, dapat public. Para iisa tayo na naiintindihan lahat. Tuloy natin. This could pose as a big hindrance or problem, sir, because also very recently they made, again, that similar statement, often repeated, about the Philippines' commitment and promise to remove the BRP Sierra Madre, to which no other past official has said that such commitment was made and even for even further down the road sir the president president bongbong marco said if uh, there was any commitment whatsoever in the past i rescind it how can we have talks grounded on those um, three elements that you had mentioned when So again, let's set that aside, sir. But when they keep insisting that we have to remove the BRP Sierra Madre over there, sir. Well, good faith. what kind of talks do they want? If they want uh, institutionalized talks which are fair, which are legal, and which are acceptable and uh, binding on us pursuant to our constitution and pursuant to our sworn mandate to safeguard the interests of the Filipinos now and for the future generations, they have to have these three principles in mind when they enter talks. I want to jump back to uh, the Joint Patrol, sir, just very quickly. It escaped me a while ago. Um, What about possible, uh, just possible, sir, Joint Patrols with ASEAN countries? Well, we are, we look forward to that and we, uh, we welcome Joint Patrols with ASEAN countries. Actually, mas maganda nga yun, actually. Uh, that is uh, one of the... Uh, Huwag lang mag-away-away. ...that may be discussed uh, by myself with hmm. my counterparts of other ASEAN countries on the sidelines of the ASEAN Defense Minister's meeting in Jakarta. Mm-hmm. But that is very welcome. And actually, we exhort our ASEAN uh, counterparts and ASEAN countries in order to uh, support our claims against further intrusions by China. Because uh, today, the Philippines, tomorrow, we don't know. I would hate to think of uh, what could happen next, but obviously this is something that needs to be thought of, from the laser pointing to the water cannon, and then now to this collision. I I guess the question is, are we prepared (laughs) if if something worse actually happens, sir? Well, we are prepared as best as we can, and certainly we're not trying to provoke a big uh, incident. We're just doing what we need to do to stand up for our rights. The, the calculation is always being done as to cost-benefit of what we're doing. 
but yet the causes of uh, uh, subjecting ourselves to the jurisdiction of China far outweigh uh, no, they are far uh, outweighed by the benefits of securing our sovereignty. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the hardest thing on our mind is to warmonger. Right. Just standing up for our rights and trying to uh, place uh, a spine on our mm -hmm. sovereignty and territorial uh, integrity. So, uh, your concern is as great as everyone in the defense establishment. However, we do not control an irresponsible, bigger and more powerful act. <laughs> Correct. Yet to subjugate our, to be subjugated by them is not only a violation of the constitution, but a moral wrong mm -hmm. to our people and the future generations. Actually, mga kutsero, nakakatawa nga eh, yung mga pro-China Um, people. Masabihin nila, pag tinanong, ano magandang solusyon? Hayaan na muna natin status quo. Diba? Ganun lagi na sasabi. Hayaan muna natin. Tapos, pag-usapan natin on the side. O, puro usap. Alam nyo, yung usap-usap na yon. ano lang yun, it's a distraction. Para lang, ano, para lang, me mema ba? Mema. Mema sabi lang. O, hindi, hayaan na muna natin to, usap-usap lang. Usap-usap muna tayo. Tapos, Habang nangyayari yan, si China nagpapalaki na nagdadagdag na nagdadagdag ng base militar. Si China naghuhukay na ng uh, langis diyan sa ating uh, West Philippine Sea. Si China inaani lahat ng ating corals. Si China inaani yung mga <laughs> yung mga isda tas ibebenta sa atin, di ba? Double parang ano, <laughs> inimport natin yung ninakaw nila. <laughs> so these things are happening present at present. Except siguro yung nag-aano ng langis, wala pa. Wala. Actually, from what I understand, wala pang nag-uhukay ng langis dyan. But, yun yung gusto nilang mangyari. Ang gusto nila, status quo. Hayaan nyo lang kami dito, tapos usap tayo on the side. Ano yung mga kutsero? Yan ang diskarte ng scammer. Yan ang diskarte ng manloloko. Yan ang diskarte ng mga demonyo dyan sa ano, China. Diskarte nila yan. Tapos, kapag pumalag tayo, tayo pa masama. <laughs> diba? Ang sabihin, nagpapauto kayo sa Amerika. O, tayo pa masama. Diba? Colonial mentality lang yan. O, free yourself of that colonial mentality. O, free yourself of the colonial mentality of uh, America and then, you allow yourself to be colonized, you allow your mind to be colonized by the Chinese Communist Party. Sige lang. Kayo na lang. Enjoy kayo. So, hanggang dito lang po muna tayo sa video na ito. Huwag niyo pong kalimutan mag-subscribe sa Coach Jared YouTube channel. At huwag niyo rin pong kalimutan mag-follow sa ating Facebook page. And uh, I'll see you again in our next uh, video or live stream. God bless you. And see you next time, guys. Bye!